Today we are going to replace this ISP router which is really sluggish and it has a firmware that is completely outdated but it's what I have to use but I'm going to replace it with this new TP-Link Archer GXE75 which is a Wi-Fi 6E router. We have seen several solutions that will allow us to replace the ISP router but today we are going to see an integrated solution that will give us a much better range and much faster speeds along with a better management firmware whether on the mobile app or on the desktop. I'll be sharing with you tests on all over my house which is a three floor house and we will go even on the most hidden spots which is where I do have some smart devices connected and I need some solutions like power line adapters or access points which is what I'm using at this moment and we are going to find out if this is enough or not. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get even cheaper. Now this is the TP-Link Archer GX E75 with Wi-Fi 6E as I said. It has one 2.5 gigabit WAN port, four 1 gigabit LAN ports, one USB 3.0 and RGB lightning which makes everything faster. Now in case we want to change the colors we can or if we want to turn it off completely we can also do. Let's start by saying that the ISP router only delivers the maximum of my internet connection which is 500 megabits per second if I'm very close to it. If I'm on the same room but with a wall between, which is what happens in this example, the ISP drops to 400 megabits per second while the TP-Link stays at 500 megabits per second. On the garage, which is the next room, as one wall between six, seven meters away, we get on the ISP 400 megabits per second and on the TP-Link 500 megabits per second, which is really cool. Moving to the living room, we have two walls, 12 to 15 meters away where I do have the TV and the couch and so on. I was on the wall most far away from the router position. For the ISP we were getting 200 megabits per second on the TP-Link 500 megabits per second. If I move to the balcony which is just next to the living room and we have more distance and another wall the ISP has no signal at all. The TP-Link on the 6 GHz band was getting 199 megabits per second and on the 2.45 GHz we were getting 284 megabits per second more or less which was really cool for that location right over there. If you want to have the breakfast and have a Wi-Fi coverage for your multimedia then you are just great. Now on the kitchen which is a tricky spot because it has the stairwell with a lot of concrete, a lot of iron and walls between. On the ISP provider we have 12 megabits per second while on the TP-Link we were getting 196 megabits per second and this was actually one of those tests that surprised me. When I move further away to the dining room which is a small room next to the kitchen on the ISP without any surprises we have no signal at all and on the TP-Link we were getting 10 megabits per second which is also really cool. Now it's not enough and on that area I usually use either access points or power line adapters at least that's what I've been using so far and I'll keep on using I'm not keeping this router for myself but if I go a bit further because I was having signal there and I thought okay let's go to the front yard near the entrance and the ISP router has no signal there but the TP-Link as it has less barriers there was reaching 132 megabits per second which is really cool. This is another area like the dining room that we just seen before that I use a power line that will cover that area so that I have smart devices there. And if I go near to the wall that will go to the main street then the ISP just forget about it but the TP-Link was getting 
10 to 20 megabits per second, which is not amazing, but it's just enough for smart doorbells, video doorbells, which sometimes I do share with you, solutions that I actually use here at home. And to achieve a Wi-Fi coverage, in my particular case, I use that power line adapter that I did mention, I already shared here, and I will try to leave some links down below, or even access points. Actually, my network is always changing because I do test out a lot of devices, but my main network, I mean the process of changing it. At this moment, I'm using the TP-Link Archer R5, which is a router, but I'm using as access point. And at this moment, I've got two of those. And I will be also testing out really soon a mesh solution. And hopefully with those, I will be able to get a different setup for my network without using the power line adapters. But this is something that I'll only be able to share with you over time. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, maybe this is a good time for that. And this closes the test on the ground floor. So for a house with one single floor, you can see the kind of coverage. Now let's go here at where we are. Now on this office area, exactly where I am, a few meters that way or this way, the ISP was getting 120 megabits per second. TP-Link on the 6 GHz was getting 290 megabits per second and on the 5 GHz roughly 470 megabits per second, which is really, really cool and a huge difference from the ISP router. Now, if I move to that end right over there, which is the area where I do have the TV, a couch, the gym area, my ISP provider router does not reach there and that's a difficult zone because although the router is just above here, that's the stairwell right over there. It has a lot of concrete, a lot of iron, so it's really difficult to reach there. This one doesn't even come close. As soon as I walk to that door right over there, that you can see over there, I lose complete signal on the ISP router, so I do have other solutions like power line adapters and so on, but this one here was actually able to get a signal of 20 megabits per second, which is not bad at all. Now, if I get out here of the office and go to my backyard where I do have the pool area, which is at the basement level, so the same level as we are right now, on my ISP router, no signal at all. And on the TP-Link, we were getting 130 megabits per second. And this was another result that I was surprised how good results we were getting on that area. So I thought, okay, let's go to the end of the back wall. So if I moved more, I would be on my neighbor's house and it's a good distance. When you see other networks right over there, you don't know my network. So I do have a few power line adapters. I do have access points, but the only one that matters here is the one that you see Mayo 2 point something gigahertz and the TP link, which is called Archer. So everything else, just forget about it. Those are networks that I do use. Some of them can be from my neighbors as well, but those are the only two that matter for these tests. But on that back wall, we were getting about 100 to 150 megabits per second, which is really, really cool. And despite being further away than the gym area, it's easy to explain because although the router is here, if I move to that part where the swimming pool is, I have less barriers. I have one wall right over here, but after that, two walls actually, and after that, open area. While the router being there, to go through these walls and the stairwell is a lot more difficult, although the distance is smaller here, near the TV and the couch and so on that we have seen, 10 megabits, 20 megabits, and no signal at all. Right over there, really far away, but it was doing a great job. Now, last test on the basement level, which is a basement inside a basement. It's basically where I do have the pool pump house for the swimming pool. It's really hidden and nothing usually works right over there. I use a power line adapter for my smart devices, some cameras that I do test out, and actually I do have a camera right over there. And surprise, the TP-Link reached here with decent speeds and that was another surprising test. Now, it only dropped to 10 megabits when I did put the phone 
behind that final really thick concrete wall which is still impressive and I don't know if you can notice that but on that area we are below this floor here so when I do hide the phone it means that I'm grabbing half the wall and half that concrete of the floor so it's really really difficult and I was getting about 100 and 150 megabits here and then when I put the phone right over there we were reaching about 10 megabits and the signal very very weak but it's probably enough to use on smart devices as I do have some right over there to measure my solar PV systems that I do have there to put my swimming pool pump to work and turn it off as I did already <laughs> share everything on the channel but for those devices we don't need a lot so I need further testings but I would say that it did pass that test now let's go for the final tests on the first floor which is two floors above of the area that I'm here now on the entrance wall which is just after the stairs the ISP router was getting 30 to 50 megabits per second while the TP-Link on the 6 gigahertz was getting 263 megabits per second and on the TP-Link 5 gigahertz roughly 320 megabits per second now on the first floor balcony which is far away on the other end of the house we were getting on the ISP 0.5 megabits per second and unstable sometimes it would just drop the connection the tp-link could achieve 10 megabits per second which is not great but if we want to connect the smart device then we can and then on the other bedroom to finalize the tests at the far end of the house ISP doesn't reach there not even close and the TP-Link was getting 30 megabits per second which is not bad at all it's not enough for what I need right over there that's my oldest son room and he needs and he wants a faster connection and that's what he has with an access point that will reach the maximum of our connection and I also have an Ethernet cable directly to his room so it's all okay but it's really cool to see that we could reach 30 megabits per second so if it was a situation just for a smart TV for example I believe that would be enough in terms of setup it's really easy it's done on the app and in about three to four minutes we have everything ready we can manage it via the TP-Link app which is something that we already know or if you need more advanced features, which I believe that most users will not, then we will have the browser that we can use on a mobile or on any PC. I did use the iPhone 16 Pro, Pixel 9 Pro and the Huawei Mat X6. Is it enough to cover my house? I would say that almost and if this was a house that didn't require so many gadgets and devices connected I would say that for most people probably yeah most people won't have two PV systems on the pool pump house or most people don't have a smart pool pump that will go on automatically and off automatically where I can measure the power consumption of every single device and I'm obsessed with these things so for a normal house probably yeah in this particular case I would say that no even if I had this router as my main router I would require for a few spots another access point or a power line adapter which is what I use today but as I said I'm changing my network and I would like to stop using the power line adapters if that's possible probably yes with solutions similar to this and one access point located here and there but I will share that with you as soon as I change that if this goes to a single story house then I would say that if your area is similar to mine then you are just fine by the way I do have here 480 square meters of total area so you have an idea of the space even if you have a two-story house and if the router is in a centralized area that you can grab from the upper floor or downer floor I wouldn't see much issues there unless you have big barriers like I do have here on the stairwell area you saw that I run some tests on the 6 gigahertz and then on the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and I didn't mention more because I didn't want this video to be longer than it already is the way that the router works is that it has the 6 gigahertz with one SSID for the network so one name and then it has the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz together on another SSID and we can split them but I don't see any advantage in that at least for most users but in terms of conclusion what we can achieve with the 6 gigahertz is we will have better speeds if we are close to the router and without 
barriers. We already know this, but this is just another test, just another device that just gives us more certainty that things work that way. So if I was here with this router and a computer on that end of the room and I don't want to bring a cable in, the best network that I could find or the best SICID is the one from the 6 GHz. That one is the one that will give me faster speeds right over here. But as soon as I go to a longer distance and I start having barriers like walls and doors, then the best will be the 2.4 which is connected to the 5 GHz. And the way that it works is that until it can capture the 5 gigahertz we will have those crazy speeds of 470 megabits 500 megabits and so on and so forth but if we go really far away really far away like we did on the pool pump basement inside the basement and we get slower speeds then that is the 2.4 gigahertz which will be able to deliver further distance with more barriers but with slower speeds. But that is something that our devices will do automatically with the router between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So they will connect to the best possible connection. And for those that already knew this, sorry about that. I don't get tired of repeating and explaining these things that we keep on testing out and then at the end of the day, we keep on learning. Hopefully you've enjoyed to meet the Archer GXE75. Almost forgot the name. I will leave the link down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.